and welcome to episode uno of the Linux Action Show Mini. This is the tiny, itty-bitty, bite-sized version of the big, big show, the Linux Action Show. That comes out every two weeks, every fortnight, if you will. And we wanted to have something on those off weeks. Every, every other Sunday, you get just bombarded into your brain with the Linux Action Show. Big While show. on those off Sundays, where normally you could nap, not anymore. Now you have to watch Linux Action Show Mini. It's very exciting. It's like very, it. very exciting yeah. how we're invading your life like this. We're You're welcome. We're going to keep these mini episodes well, short and succinct, so we're just going to cover uh, one listener question this week and one or two news stories depending on what we get to. You betcha. The so, stuff that, that, that uh, we just can't manage to cover in the big, big show. Last week on the Linux Action Show, we did a big gaming episode. We did. And it was it was pretty good. We we focused predominantly on open source games. Yeah. So uh, did you know, cover, that's, did we talk about any commercial games? Uh, I believe we mentioned Wolfenstein uh, uh, Enemy Territory. I believe uh, okay. brought that up, which is a, a, a fantastic game, um, but it's commercial but freely available. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this time, uh, what I what we'd like to do, and we got a lot of email, a lot of comments in the forum, uh, a couple of comments on our blog saying, hey, why not mention some of the really cool commercial yeah. gaming titles that are available for Linux? Right. Well, why not? So we got some lists. We, we got some lists here. Let's, I just wanted to mention ones. a few of them. Yeah. I like now, some, some of these we've, we've talked about um, in depth before, uh, such as the Penny Arcade game on the Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness. Yep, we had the developers on the show. We, we even had one of the developers uh, come down uh, and uh, was on the show. I, I don't even remember when that was. It was probably episode like sixty something. It's it was been a while. It was over a year ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, very very cool guy. Um, but so I, I highly recommend that one. Uh, that game is basically an, an adventure RPG, kind of uh, kind of a throwback to some of the Final Fantasy games, mm -hmm. um, in uh, in the combat style. Very cartoony. If you like Penny Arcade, of course you like the game, game. and it's very episodic. So theoretically. Yeah, we reviewed that game on season one of Castle well, Blaster, right? On season one of Castle yeah, Blaster, I think so. one, of, one of the other shows, if you're not familiar. Um, so, but but yeah, so it's a very cool game, and it's one of those games that came out simultaneously on a lot of platforms and consoles and everything. So uh, we definitely like to support the developers that are doing that for Linux as well. Um, so, but along that same lines, uh, at PlayGreenhouse.com uh, is where you can get that game. And uh, uh, that game, there's also some other games for Linux on there uh, that uh, are worth looking at, such as Escalon uh, Book One. Uh, definitely worth taking a look at there. It's just kind of an old school, top down role playing game. Kind of reminds you of like the old Ultima games, that sort of thing. Okay. It's not necessarily cutting edge graphically, but uh, it's a good game nonetheless. Right. So uh, it's worth checking out. Um, a couple other ones I just want to throw out here real quick. Uh, Darwinia uh, at introverse.co.uk. It's a really friggin' weird game. It's very, <laughs> like, lots of colored lines and vector graphics, and, right, and yeah. it's like a multiplayer, real-time sort of strategy title, but it's available for Linux, and it's very cool. And it's, uh, you know, if you like the more retro look and feel and kind of more of an acid trip style game, mm -hmm. it's definitely worth looking at, I think. Did you see that uh, email that uh, Alec wrote in? He said, hey guys, have you checked out Enemy Territory Quake Wars? He says yeah. the game costs about 30 bucks. Uh, it's completely native on Linux, and uh, the graphics are absolutely stunning, definitely on par with Windows-based yeah. games. He's absolutely right. And and uh, he points out that uh, this comes from uh, id software, ID software, or Splash mm -hmm. Damage, mm -hmm. and they are uh, very good about coming out with games yeah. for okay. Linux. Awesome. Now, what he, what he does point out, and uh, this is definitely worth noticing, is not all their games have a Linux binary on the DVD or CD, but that they tend to have the Linux binary available from their website. You just got to go grab the CD. And so you have you the, use data. the data on the CD or DVD. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But that's perfectly fine for me. Honestly, I don't mind that at all. That it's I still like the fact that they're uh, that they're supporting it. In like fact, that. they've got it's almost nice anyways because then you're going to get the newest latest version. Yeah, you, you always get the latest. Mm -hmm. It's it's really not a bad way to go. Uh, and that company's also got a new game coming out that's like a a uh, shooter racing game called Rage that's supposed to be shipping simultaneously for Linux as well. So, nice. so it's not just old games that we've got uh, coming out. Which you know, we've, there's a um, there's a lot of shooters available on Linux, both open source mm -hmm. and commercial. Yep. We've got you know Unreal Tournament and all those games from Epic, 
also very good about supporting the Linux platform. Uh, but there's also a lot of new commercial titles coming as well. So uh, a lot of stuff from PlayGreenhouse.com, uh, definitely supporting Linux, and uh, Rage from id is supporting Linux. And I don't see companies like id ditching Linux anytime soon. It seems to be like in their blood. That's part of their thing. All right, so that's, so that's very, very there. I like those. Hey, it's a positive, right? Yeah. So why, yeah. Don't we, why don't we cover a couple of the news stories that we didn't get to last week on the big show? Uno momento, por favor. Right. Time, I, need consult, sir, time sir. I need to consult my pad. Um, uh, well, yeah, no, okay, we can move on. We okay. can move on. All right, and, and yeah, the pad says okay. I um, defer to so something we didn't really talk about last week was that the GIMP project has released their new version of the GIMP software, GIMP yep. 2.6. There's a couple of big things in this new version of GIMP. One of them... Before we talk about anything further, can, can I just mention how weird it is that so many open source projects are right around 2.6 something? Ooh. You, you notice that a lot? Like between, you know, kernels of this and GNOME of that and, and this and that and this. Call. It's like 2.2 point something is everything. That's I think from now on, no open source projects can have 2.6. I think that that needs to be like the 13th floor where you just go from 12 <laughs> to 14 and skip it. And so technically 14 is 13, but we just don't talk about that. Sure, sure. I think we need to do that for 2.6. We uh -huh. just jump right to 2.7 or hell, just go to 3.0, right? Right. 3.0 is great. You know what? 3.0, let's skip 3.0 because everyone remembers Windows 3.0 and it was just, oh my lord. Let's skip to like 3.2. Just go 3.2. So 2.5. It doesn't exist until 3.2. Like That's all I'm like. saying. All right, so a couple right. of new features in GIMP 2.6 is a unified window. You bring it up, and you get, like, one overall big window that all the palettes are yes. outside of. Huge. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal. The total new UI change, and it's really nice. Okay. The other thing that's kind of new that I don't quite understand is that they have a new, like, drawing back end. It's called GEGL. And it allows for 32-bit based images, which means, you know, RAMs, RAM can be, in, in the past they were 8-bit channel only, now they're 32-bit channel, so they can take advantage of a lot more of a modern system's RAM capacity. Right. Now, right. the weird thing is, though, is this feature is not actually turned on by default. And no. it won't be for most distributions. You're going to have to build GIMP yourself and enable that at build time. So, so this is cool. So I was looking through what GEGL does, and GEGL stands for the Generic Graphics Library. And it's basically just a new image processing framework that they built, and uh, it looks very powerful. It looks like it does a heck of a lot. It deals with a lot of image formats. It mm -hmm. can handle... Um, uh, can handle just about any kind of 8, 16, and 32-bit floating point uh, per component buffers large RAM. And, but, but yeah, why is it not on by default? So I uh, what we need to do is I need to sit down and I need to make a build of this and actually see if it's yeah. usable yet. I need to see if maybe this is just uh, an exciting thing that's coming down the line right. or if this literally is a new feature of GIMP that we can call a feature of GIMP. And if it is a feature of GIMP, why the heck is it, is it not shipping? All right. Seriously. We're out of time. That'd be like... We're out of time. Like, we gotta go. We're out of time? We're gotta go. Time. We gotta go. So everybody, make sure you tune in the next week, jupiterbroadcasting.com for the big show, and the week after that we'll have last minute and maybe we'll continue this discussion. It's non-stop, you guys. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next week for the big show, jupiterbroadcasting.com.